and welcome to The Sim Hanger. My name's Mark, The Sim Hanger for all things flight sim related. And there's certainly a lot going on in the flight sim world at the moment. Vulcan comes to X-Plane 11.5. Prepared comes out with version 5. And development of Microsoft Flight Simulator continues to progress and tempt us with features and visuals we just haven't seen before. And the forums well, they're full of debate and views in terms of pros and cons for each one of those flight simulators. But there are a number of flight simulators that don't fall within that category, and they tend to be the more niche products. Case in point would be DCS. It's very specifically a military flight sim. And the flight simulator that we're going to be having a look at today, Dead Stick Bush Flight Simulator, falls into that niche category. If you're into GA flying, if you like it VFR, you like it low and slow, and you like the challenges of landings in difficult places, well then Dead Stick Bush Flight Simulator is worth a look. And it's worth a look because it's not trying to be all things to all men. It's very focused on what it does. It features a persistent aircraft that more than gives A2A simulations a run for its money. The flight model has been developed over years and it features physical damage modeling, which is great and something rarely seen in flight sims. Dead Stick's fictional world, the terrain is loosely based on Alaska. Well, let's take a look and let's get started. Dead Stick has not been released yet. When it does, it will be via the Steam platform. It's currently still in alpha, expected to enter a closed beta in the near future before an early access release prior to the end of 2020. In the Dead Stick world, you're based on a southern island with a northern island still in development and it's not clear whether this will be available for early access but your world is 17,000 square kilometers to roam in. Once released and over time, the Dead Stick world will be expanded by a number of DLCs. I believe one based on Papua New Guinea is planned. Our expansive island world consists of a wide variety of different environments from dense forest, sparse tundra to snow-capped mountains. The focus of Dead Stick is very much on the pilot. You'll need to earn money in order to unlock items and so you can customize and upgrade your aircraft. There's a multitude of airports in the sim and at the larger ones you can go to the briefing computer, download the latest weather and NOTAMs, have a look at what jobs are available on the notice board which will update both the map and your plug. All navigation here is dead reckoning and don't forget to pay your landing fees. As you complete jobs successfully, so your reputation improves and so better jobs come your way. As you earn money, this will give you the funds in order to upgrade your aircraft so you can take on different jobs. The more you complete, the better your reputation gets. But of course you do have the option to do a few illicit or illegal jobs. It's going to be a balance between reputation and money. But if you can't be bothered with that type of thing, well, there is a free flight mode where you can just fly around and explore. Included with the early access will be a multiplayer mode, which will give you visibility of other pilots flying around you using Dead Sticks cloud-based services. You will also have the option to create private or public rooms where you can set your own conditions. So you can fly with your friends and enable or disable aircraft collisions. We're in the main hangar and this is where everything begins. Here we can check our aircraft over, check the components, conduct any repairs, as well as if we've got the money, do the upgrades. If you just want to jump in and fly, you can, but if you want something more detailed, Almost all aspects of the systems have been finely modelled. This aircraft, the only one that will come initially with Dead Stick on release, features a comprehensive range 
of things that need to be checked and maintained because it is a persistent aircraft and what you do and how you do it will have a direct impact on the life and safety of yourself and the aircraft. From a number of menu options we can decide whether to repair and or customize our aircraft and we can choose different liveries, give it a different look we can also look to upgrade the aircraft and see what facilities are available and whether or not we can afford it. In addition, as we progress, certain items will be unlocked. So we can see here that the 19-inch and 22-inch Tundra tyres at this stage are just not available. More experience required. Loading up our aircraft is fairly intuitive and the items tend to snap into place, although you do have an option of where to place them. And at all times, you've got to be conscious of the effect on the weight and balance of your aircraft. This could have a big impact on you once you're up in the air. As we load up the aircraft so we can see the impact of the weight on the aircraft as the suspension slowly but surely flexes up and down as we add and remove cargo. I think we've just got room for one more and that can go in there. Let's close the door. There we go. Compared to what we saw earlier, I've now got a few more gauges as I've upgraded. And talking of systems modeling, it has full comms, transponder, etc. And we can see here the draw when I pop the circuit breaker and then push it back in, we can see the drawdown in terms of the amps. Every circuit breaker and switch has an impact. If you're a stickler for systems and interdependency, then this is for you. Dead Sticks World is dynamic and the impact on your aircraft is dynamic as well. Let's have a look at some ice buildup on the aircraft on all the surfaces. You've got to keep one eye peeled on your aircraft at all times if flying in cold or icy conditions because ice can add substantial weight to your aircraft and even more importantly change the aerodynamic features of the aircraft. One very cool feature of dead stick is the damage modeling. Let's drop this on the wing. Bang! Look at that damage there. Of course being based on a cub that is a fabric covering. Let's now try and uh, something on the front windscreen and we can see the cracks there, the breakages in the glass. Wow, that's amazing. We'll be having a look at an actual crash just now. According to the developers, Track IR will be supported as will most joysticks and I assume yokes as well. VR support apparently will be limited to free flight mode during early access as they still have work to do to make the walk around the aircraft and dealing with the menus more compatible and usable in VR. They've also announced that they'll be releasing an SDK under Steam Workshop at some point so you can create your own liveries. Dead Stick will inherently support sloped runways as well as numerous dirt strips. One interesting fact, if I've got it right, is that the map will not show you all the airstrips and these will be uncovered as you progress through the sim. Deadstick Bush Flight Simulator uses True Sky for full volumetric clouds. The wind effects on your aircraft are fully modelled with up and down drafts. And the aircraft flight model itself has received a lot of attention. Whilst it doesn't support seasons per se, there is 10 years worth of metadata that have been input into the system so you have changeable and dynamic weather at any time of day or night. Sounds have been recorded from real aircraft. The developers plan on bringing more aircraft into the sim at a later date as well as variants on the existing aircraft including floats and skis. The rugged and challenging terrain is not real world but is modelled on height data from Alaska. They've developed their own tools to enable them to create and model the perfectly challenging environment. This should be good news for future rapid development and expansion of dead stick scenery areas. 
The way I see it is that Dead Stick Bush Flight Simulator is just the initial building block for what will become a complete platform on its own for bush flying. Not only has the aircraft been modelled to interact fully with the environment, but the pilot is subject to it as well, such as G-force, hypoxia and other things such as pilot fatigue. If you need to land because of pilot fatigue or perhaps you're just losing the light, well, you can spend the night in a tent. The comms frequencies support voice over internet protocol so you can chat with other players if you're in multiplayer mode or you could simply tune in to an internet radio and have a bit of music while you fly. In keeping with the dynamic environment, the passage of time has full effect on not just your aircraft, but on the environment and the weather as a whole. Being a pilot in dead stick means you've got to be aware of your surroundings and the impact of those surroundings on your aircraft, what your fuel levels are, oil levels. It's a persistent aircraft and needs constant monitoring, otherwise you'll run into unforeseen problems, just like in the real world. If you do crash, not only will your reputation be harmed, but of course it's going to cost you a whole lot of money. You're going to have to use your mobile or cell to call for salvage. Back to the hangar for expensive repairs. The one good thing about dead stick and a crash is that it's got damage modelling. Let's have a quick look at what that may look like. Bear in mind, what we're looking at is pre-alpha. Blasting through the trees, there's no recovery now. Oh, a complete wing has just sheared off. Yeah, I've lost one wing completely. Windscreen is cracked. Now getting out. And the weight has changed in the aircraft. And that's been beautifully modelled there. Look at that prop. Windscreen's cracked. Wow, that's really buckled. This is going to be expensive. Being on the ground gives us an opportunity to look at the amount of 3D modelling. Each blade of grass is blowing in the wind, as are those shrubs and tessellation on the sloped ground. To Chris and his team, I'd say, well done. I know there's a lot of work to do, but we're anxious. Come on. Get Dead Stick Bush Flight Simulator out. I have a sneaking suspicion there'll be an appetite for this one. Well, I must say that I'm really looking forward to the release of Dead Stick. I have tried it out on two previous occasions, once in 2018 and once in 2019 at the Cosford Flight Sim Show. It looked good then. It looks even better now. I can't wait for early access. There's further development notes and information on Dead Stick on the Steam platform, and I'll leave links in the notes below. Thank you very much for joining me. Take care of those around you and yourselves. And I hope to see you all again very soon. Bye for now.